I'm going to show you here what I've changed to in the last couple of years for my crappie system. I've gotten really into it the last few years and I was carrying just these huge boxes of all these different baits and colors and different styles. You have tube jigs and curl tail jigs and, and then little straight tail jigs for vertical jigging. And what I found is you can take these little shad bodies. This is a Bobby Garland baby shad or you got the little, you know, dock shooter bait they just came out with. Minnow minder. But you see how they got these real wispy little tails? Um, and you'll notice just me holding that in my hand, how much that bait, that tail's moving, just me holding it still there. I mean, that's all you do. You just barely twitch it in the water and that tail kicks. You can, when you're reeling it in, it's got just a real subtle, you know, a little shad kick as you're reeling through the water. So what you can do is you can take like a seven foot medium light rod and, and I can take that one rod and reel and then you know, a handful of these tails. So you can see I've got just these little boxes. You know, maybe two little boxes with a couple different styles, but this is one little straight tail bait. I could take and cast it, fish it, reeling it over cover. I can take and throw it in the cover and pull it over the branches. I can shoot it under docks. I can get out there and vertical jig. And I can do all that with one rod and reel setup and a handful of tails and some couple different colors. And that way I don't have to carry tubes, curl tail grubs, straight tail grub. You know, I got all these different crappie baits. I can take this one system and go do everything I need to do with crappie fishing. So check that out. Maybe limit your choices a little bit so you, you're not trying to get everything under the sun to trick them. Carry a handful of colors, um, you know, for clear water or dirty water, kind of based on the water clarity and depth. And I, and I keep it real simple and I've been able to catch a ton of crappie the last couple of falls with just this little simple system. So I thought I'd share just a couple minutes of catching crappie. I found several decent brush piles with these little just stinger tails. That's a Jenko, uh, their new fry bait. Um, but I, uh, you know, I catch these fish out of brush piles and a bunch of the brush piles I found this fall um, were pretty close to the bank. Um, so probably shallower than a lot of guys were fishing. Um, and with these stinger tail systems, you know, usually what I do is I start out casting at the piles, then I'll let it kind of pendulum down through the pile. And as it's kind of falling, you know, I get a lot of bites when the bait's actually not moving. Um, it's, it's just kind of falling on a semi slack line. Um, seems like when you stop a bait, the more you stop a bait, the more bites you get crappie fishing. It's just like you just kind of want to give it a little twitch and then let it fall, give it a little twitch and let it fall. So you see a lot of times I'm not even reeling. Then vertical jigging is the same kind of deal. It's just kind of just a little light twitch and just then hold it in place. A little light twitch and then hold it in place. It's not a big movement at all. I mean, I have, I do catch some getting it, you know, and hopping it real hard. Um, but I fished some with a guy down in Paris, Tennessee, Daniel Ellis, and he just, he absolutely clobbers the crappie in the winter, vertical fishing with just two poles, pole in each hand. And, um, he's really good at it. He showed me a lot about it and, and it's just, you know, it's kind of getting it down there over the brush and then just barely moving it, just kind of getting their attention and then holding it there, getting their attention and kind of holding it there. Just a little flutter, a little tail kicks, all you really want. He uses tubes a lot, but I played around using the stinger tails and uh, did pretty good. Um, once I kind of got a feel for how the brush laid and how high I needed to, you know, how deep I needed to let my lure go down. And then just like I say, kind of barely moving the jig um, just to kind of get their attention. But, um, you know, Daniel's a stick at it. He's he's really good at it. He, he I mean, he pretty much clobbers them every time he goes, and he's put a lot of time and effort into sinking brush on some good places, so he's got lots of good spots, and he's able to rotate through, and he's a, he's a master with boat control, but uh, it's interesting to me that, you know, I was able to take the stinger and compete with uh, tubes and catch them, and then just, you know, vertically fishing with a short pole over brush worked well for me, you know, in the fall and in, even in, into the winter. Um, you don't have to have the big long poles if you don't feel like doing that. If, if all you can really afford is one rod and reel, um, get you a six footer, seven footer, uh, and again, get out and find the brush, you know, take a handful of baits and uh, see where it gets you. Oh, I just broke one off up there. Really? Really? 